This review is brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne Wright at DwayneWright.com and in this video I'm going to give you a quick tour of InBusiness Soho, a FileMaker-based CRM package that we created a couple years ago that still works great for any users that are using FileMaker Pro 9 and higher. So in this movie I'm going to give you a quick look at the navigation operation area, some of the modules, and then under the hood some of the coding underneath because FileMaker uh, makes customizations so easy to do and in business Soho is sold open so that you can modify it for your individual business needs so now we're looking at the main screen and it does use a tab interface as we go across and you'll find that very prevalent in the other modules as well the we also use custom menus at the top so you do have a customized experience up there in the main menu, we do have navigations to the main modules, but there's even more navigation underneath the navigation menu, which, again, you'll find in all modules. Now, this may be a package that has what appears to be a touch too much, and don't let that scare you away. If there are modules that you don't want to use and you think they'd be confusing to your users, you can always just take those away from the user interface, and those users would never go to those areas. But you can leave them there if you want to use them for other tasks. Also, the way in Business Soho is built, you can just take those entire modules out. Keep a backup copy just in case you want to use it, and go forward. And if you have your own package right now and you say you don't want to switch over, you can open up in Business Soho and using FileMaker Advanced, harvest the key areas and put them into your package and give you a great head start. So quickly over here, we do have a lot of people-based modules, clients, contacts, vendors, staff, and leads. So, and a client could have multiple contacts that are working inside of that office. And we have a basic uh, set of general buttons up here at the top. You'll find that consistent in all modules. And then a lower area underneath here that is special to that module. And then you have tabbed interfaces, sometimes a top tab, and down at the bottom, these will be tabs that link that record to other modules. So these are all the uh, sales orders for this particular client. Or these are all the credit memos or support calls that may go for a particular client. And so let's just jump down to... Um, so as you can see in the clients and then vendors, looks quite a bit the same, only it's vendors modules. And then it's staff. You can put all your staff member in here, and then you can track their time cards, any activities that they have going on, filtered by ranges, emails they had sent or received, uh, admin things like the equipment or software that they may have, HR information, so forth. We go down to proposals. This gives you ability to fill in multiple tabs worth of information, and then at the very end, have a built proposal already that takes those elements. And then again, it, you can have quotes where you can give to customers. You can convert a quote to a sales order. And then as a sales order, multiple items or items out there ship. If they're shipped separately, those would go to invoices. And then, of course, with invoices, we do have payments that are applied to those invoices. And again, we have tabs all over the place that link these different modules together. Uh, we do have a very robust inventory module, so you can go your inventory levels, multiple pricing schemes. You can take a look at the different transactions that are go with a particular item as it goes across. Um, you know, marketing efforts, that type of thing. And then we have more of our marketing related areas. We have campaigns, so these could be marketing campaigns like trade shows or advertising events. It can also be used as projects. You know, or or redoing our manufacturing process or our customer SAT process. These could be linked to show the different clients and leads that are linked to it, the events to that campaign, again all ranged based time cards that staff members have done that they have associated to a campaign, batch emails, and even more. Again you can see there's a touch too much but 
you have those options available and you can always just hide those from users if you're not going to use those at a particular time. Um, we do have correspondence, so here you could have a lot of custom um, templates and then link them to other FileMaker records and then have that link bring broad across so you can see all the different correspondence to a client or from a staff member, that type of thing. Again, emails is just basically a different type of correspondence. Uh, we do have the events. So these are the activities, start times, end times, whether that activity is billable. Again, this could be linked to a staff member, a client, an invoice, an event, you know, any number of different areas. And then we go down to purchase orders, which are kind of a flip of an invoice, only in an opposite direction. It's things that you're intending to buy. And again, you can see, you know, text entries for big fields, what you receive from a purchase order, what bills have you gotten from a particular vendor, that type of thing. And of course, the receiving of products would reflect against the inventory module for product on hand status. So when you sell a product, it automatically deducts from inventory. When you do a purchase order and you mark it as received, it adds to inventory. And then we have after your purchase, you have the bills that come from a particular vendor. So this is the vendor bill module. And again, you can take the bill, look at towards the purchase order, make sure everything is the same and keep track of them. And then we do have a finance module, which is kind of like a you know little Quicken where you have multiple accounts and all the different transactions and you can write checks. Um, you can do credit cards, you can do just about any kind of financial account and the transactions that go back and forth with those. And again, under the hood, you can link them back and forth if you so desire. And then we do have software packages, equipment, and mileage. Those are used in the office, and those are mostly linked to the staff members, so you can keep track of those. And then down here at the bottom, we have our customer relationship type of things. We have credit memos, where if you have an invoice and you're giving the customer a credit, you can. Uh, if the customer is returning product, you can issue a return merchandise authorization. Again, your company may use these, may not, but you can, you know, and it may not even be something returned from credit. It could be something returned for repair. So you have a technical area where you can record that information. And then finally down here, this is a support package, which is linked to those other modules. But this is just where you record the sales calls, or support calls rather, from a customer and the different support reps they've talked to them going back and forth. So a bunch of modules. Now, again, I had mentioned this is a FileMaker application, so if you have FileMaker Pro, you can do your customizations or hire another consultant to do customizations for you. Uh, you would want them to have FileMaker Advanced too, because there is some custom functions and custom menus in there. We jump over to Rector FileMaker. If we take a look at our scripts, you can see that the scripts are all put inside of folders. There is a standard naming convention that goes across to them, and so all the top buttons are in one FileMaker script group and then navigation, going to related records, adding related records. And again, if we take a look at the scripts, you can see that they are highly commented so that anybody that has a, a good understanding of FileMaker can go inside and start doing their modifications. Let's go ahead and take a look at the managed database area. We do have about 55 tables underneath there, but again, you can see none of them have an insane number of fields. The fields do have a standard naming convention, and they do, do all have you know some auditing logs, who created it, who modified. And then the, for a database this robust, you would think that you might have a very chaotic relationship graph, but that is not the case. It is pure anchor buoy, so we have the main modules, and then the linked modules, no main two main modules touch. And they're, again, highly documented and put into areas. So if you're working on the client's module, you know, just go directly to the client subgroup. If you're working with the invoice, their invoice, they are all done alphabetical, vertically, A through H, I through Z. So that's a quick overview of In Business Soho. If you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to send me an email at info at Thank you.